go to here. No, here. Place. Good boy. All right, well, hello. Here we are at Animal Training Development Center, and today we have Coda with us. Uh, he is on day 15 of his 17-day board and train no, please. program where he has been doing a great job with us up until he saw his very favorite of all toys right here in front of him. Um, currently, he's working the place command. We'll get into that a little bit. But while I have this, um, this is probably the favorite toy at the whole training center all week long. So uh, we want to thank you for bringing this for Coda to play with. Uh, he certainly loves it. And all the other dogs that have been around have loved it as well. So much so that we're going to get a couple of these for the training center uh, to keep around here because it's just been a great toy. So the Nerf, what is this? It's just a Nerf uh, dog. It looks like a uh, Frisbee. It's kind of heavy. Uh, but it's very, very durable. So dogs have been chewing on it. They've been playing tug of war with it constantly. And uh, it's got a couple of battle scars, but is still pretty much in one piece. So uh, highly uh, enjoyed having that. And, uh, and this is his by far favorite toy. So um, with the place command that he's on now, uh, he can have toys on it. But the idea is he can't get off of this thing until we give him a release word or we give him another command word. And uh, we've been using this cot that you brought for us to use and uh, it smells a lot like him now and he's been doing really well with it. In fact, our other trainer, uh, Kamari, said that uh, he held as she, I think even left the building momentarily. So um, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, it's a great one to have in your toolkit. We recommend you know taking the cot back home uh, setting it up in your living room, uh, giving him the place command once a night, you know, for the next uh, seven to 10 days, and just letting him spend 15, 20 minutes hanging out on the place command. Um, you don't always have to have a toy on there for him. In fact, sometimes it's good not to have, but if you want to leave something there for him to hang out and chew on, um, there's nothing wrong with that either. But uh, he's really enjoyed the place command, and this is something I know that you guys will like, and especially around the holidays. You know, there's a lot of people coming and going when a dog is really good at holding the place command. Um, they can be kind of in the living room with you, but maybe not disrupting a lot of the activities going on around him. So. We'll give that one a break and show you some of the other things we've been teaching him. Good boy. Okay, is the release word. Anytime we give that release word, he can stop doing what he's doing and do whatever he wants. And in this case, he wants desperately to continue to play with this. I'm just gonna go ahead and have him hold his sit as I get rid of this for a while. Sit. Good boy. Good dog. Good. And heel. This next one we're showing you is the heel command. And the heel command is the most important command that we teach any dog to do, no matter what their future job is going to be. No, heel. It's a very specific position that your dog will learn to hold next to your left leg. So what we're looking for is for his right leg to be parallel with my left leg and in the same position. And that's where we know that the dog is really in the right heel position. Good. When we stop, we're looking for a nice automatic sit. And he's doing really good with that. If I leave with my outside foot, that's my right foot, the foot furthest from Coda, he should stay put into the position that he's in. In this case, that sit position. Good. When I leave with my inside foot, that is, in his case, my left foot, he should fall right back into that heel position. Good. And this way we have a dog that's not just listening, but watching for your commands as well. And a dog that's both listening and watching is very likely to do what you want. Good boy. Good. Good place. All right, this time I'm just gonna let him have a little bit of a Kong toy. Uh, I like to rotate some toys, make sure they have two or three that they really enjoy. And that way they don't get bored with any one and 
and that way if something happens to one they still have backups but um, yeah he likes the Kong toy as well and while he's chewing on that a little bit I want to talk to you about some of the things that we've ob observed about Coda one of them is that um, you had mentioned that he sometimes has issues with smaller dogs and sometimes uh, dogs in general. Uh, we, we do believe that Coda has a high dominant side to him, but that doesn't make, make him necessarily overly aggressive. Um, it's just that combined with his age, combined with the fact that he's an intact male, uh, I'll just kind of you know, put him in that teenage phase I call puberty instead of puberty. And that just means that he's going to be uh, hormone driven and more emotional than he will be, you know, a year from now. But um, even so, he ended up playing really well with every dog we put in front of him, uh, you know, with some supervision. He's done so well at my house with my little Pomeranian um, that I don't even feel like I have to have supervision if I leave the room and, and they're just out together anymore. So um, getting along super well at my house and not only with the, the Pomeranian, but with my German Shepherd. And then here at the training center, you know, with the various daycare dogs that we've had in and out, uh, he's done really well. There's been some exceptions. Like I said, him being a year in an intact male um, kind of makes his, you know, hormones and stuff rage a little bit. Well, just so happens we have two other uh, dogs that come on a regular basis that are also males uh, intact and about the same age. But even so, we had all three of them playing together today and it really went pretty well. Just keep in mind that he is going to you know, continue to be hormone driven and you have to really make sure that he doesn't uh, you know, get overly stimulated and he'll still be somewhat vocal and maybe a little iffish around certain dogs. But I think overall, he doesn't have any dominant uh, problems that are going to cause aggression um, on a regular basis. I you know, think it's just going to get better with age and, and with you guys continuing to, you know, train with him. Um, next, we're going to show you the down command. And so from the place, we can go ahead and give a, a command such as heal. And obviously, Coda's allowed to get off of the place command to fall into the heel position. And he did a really good job showing us how to do that there. Here we're going to stop again from the heel position. He should automatically sit. No, sit. If he doesn't, we're just using the verbal word no. And then we're just giving a tug up and behind his head, thus pivoting his head up and his butt down. And so if he doesn't stop at the end, he now knows that he's supposed to. So you can just tell him as if you'd already told him, just no sit like that. Or you could even say no heel and either would be correct in this case. From here, the hand signal for the down goes like this and verbally we're just telling him down. Coda, down. Good. And now that he's in the down position, uh, it's, the same thing as before in the sit, if I leave with my outside foot, he should stay put. As I walk that circle around him or do something else, he needs to stay in the down position. And again, if I leave with that inside foot, he should get up and fall into that heel position. Just like that. Good dog, Coda. Here when we stop. No, sit. Once again, he didn't hit that automatic sit. So that time I was able just to verbally correct him and get him back into position. Coda, down. Good, that time he did down really well. If they don't, you're just gonna go ahead and take your foot. I'm glad he got up, nope, down, and just do that. So you're just taking your foot and you're just tapping down on the leash a little bit so that you can get him back into the down position. Uh, he really responds pretty well to that and so it shouldn't be uh, too often that you have to do it, but when you do, you just you know, step down on a leash like so. Once again, with that inside foot lead, really good about popping into that heel position for us. Stop. Good. Down. Outside foot, he should stay put. Very good. And then the release word we're using is just simple, okay, good dog, Coda. So there's a, a little example of most of the commands that we taught. Uh, we've been working the kennel command for him getting into uh, a crate and uh, he's doing really well with that. Um, you know, again, being a teenager, sometimes he balks at the idea that he has to go in there. Uh, but if you get up and just like any other command, reinforce it a few times and give him a little tug on his leash, that's gonna 
you know, be pretty much all that you need to do. And then we've been teaching a hup command, so uh, it's doing a really super job now of leaping from the ground into the uh, van where we have side-by-side -side crates for travel. And so he knows that he's supposed to sit at the vehicle, and then as you open the door, he should continue to sit until you give him the word hup. So um, you might see in the video, actually, I think on our field trip, uh, us going through that. So we'll put that uh, footage in here as well. Uh, what else? Oh, so the collar that he's wearing now, uh, I put a different prong collar on him. The one that you had was getting really tight and he's getting to be a bigger dog. And I think it's also uh, pretty thin for maybe a smaller frame dog. So I would suggest upgrading to uh, a collar like that. We, we do have these at the training center available to you if you wanna buy this one, it's like $55. But um, at any rate, I think a, a little bigger prong collar would be in order for him. And um, other than that, he's been a, a joy to, to train with. He's uh, been great at the house. He slept right through even the first night. So he really is pretty easy keeper. Um, he did have some loose stools first couple of days. I think that's sometimes a little anxiety, uh, but uh, he got that straightened out after a few days and um, had a good appetite and, and has eaten his meals and played really well. So uh, we really enjoyed him. Uh, from here, we look forward to you coming back after you pick him up. So we never do any training when people first pick up their dog. They've missed them and the dog misses them. And we're just going to let you guys have a little celebration time and uh, enjoy each other's company for a few days. But then we'd like you to have, have you come back. We'll schedule a time. And uh, it's no additional charge. But we want to just spend an hour with you, um, taking you through the techniques and making sure you're all comfortable uh, with the training that we've done and allow for you guys to continue to practice with us in drop-in classes for up to the next three months. So we're gonna give you four punch cards and each of those cards will have um, five slots on it to where we can have you come back either on Tuesday nights from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. or Saturday mornings, 10.30 to 11.30 a.m and come to one, come to both, don't come to any, it's up to you. We find that the people that take advantage of at least half of those really get the best results in the long term of you know, working with their dog. And at drop-in class, you'll have the opportunity to come you know, back with Coda and practice amongst the other dogs that drop in that day that have done similar programs to yours. And we just set up scenarios where uh, your dog can train around other dogs and uh, it's challenging, but it's doable and it's fun. And I feel like it's a really good chance for you to practice while I can kind of coach you through um, the different uh, commands. So if you have any questions, uh, just give us a call uh, or text or email us. And uh, we'll look forward to, uh, to seeing you again soon. Uh, I know Coda is excited to, uh, to get back to you and you're gonna be excited to see him too. So hope you had a great trip and uh, we'll see you soon. Happy training.
Coda down. That's better. No, Coda down. Down. Good. Yep. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Yep. Hi there. How you doing? Good. You want to pet Coda? Hi. She's real friendly. Yes. Is he allowed to have a big ear? I yeah, think I've asked you sure. that. You want a pick here? He would love one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, he's Just gonna be your best you. He's gonna be your best friend now. Thank you. Yes. Oh, Merry like, Christmas. Yes, so <laughs> he loves Merry it. Christmas. Thank you. Good boy, I'll take this with this, huh? Good boy, we'll take this. Good job. Awesome to have you along. I know, right? This is why you like me. Good boy. Oh.